Ladies, fuck. Ladies, gentlemen, I have Yanni Aloma from Dark Funeral, Night Crown, and Despite in the studio. I'm gonna show you how we tuned his drums, and hopefully you'll be able to apply some of the same techniques to your drums when recording and playing extreme metal music. I'm gonna start off with tuning the toms. I've got a 10 inch tom here, which is a great place to start if you wanna practice your tuning. Inspect the tom so that it's not too warped. Any imperfections are gonna make it harder for us to tune the head to our desired pitch. If your drum hoop is too affected, it will also make it harder for you to tune your drums. Also use the right skins. Remo is my personal favorite. It just sounds punchier to me and more open and brighter. A thin single ply head like the Remo Ambassador makes a very good resonant head. For the batter side, you're gonna wanna try a Remo Emperor. It's two ply, so it's not as clear as a single ply resonant head, but it will give you more attack and it will have more durability. Coated or clear heads for the batter side is really a personal choice. For faster, more technical music, like the music that Yanni is going to play, I want clear, punchy heads. Coated heads sound a bit more muffled, and in my opinion, they sound better for slower music, like Doom, Sludge, Garage Rock, be sure to use fresh, unused heads when you record. It's gonna make it a lot easier to tune and the end result will be punchier, louder, and brighter. Now, before you start tuning your toms, consult with your drummer. Certain drummers need a certain feel and bounce back from their toms and that's really important, especially at high tempos. We're going to tune our toms to a specific pitch. Now, it's not that important that the toms fit into the key of the song. The most important thing is the intervals between the toms and how the toms sound together. Now, that being said, if you're going to tune the toms to a certain pitch, the key of the song is a good place to start, just because the intervals between the toms will end up sounding quite musical. But remember, each tom has a limited range of tones that it can be tuned to. If the tom is tuned too high, you'll get a lot of resonance, but you won't get a lot of the fundamental tone. If the tom is tuned too low, you'll get a lot of thwack but the tom won't resonate that well. Yanni and I have decided to tune the toms to a B minor, which is the key of the song. With the help of my Virtuoso app on my telephone here, with the help of the Virtuoso piano app on my iPhone, we've decided to tune the toms to the following notes. E for our eight inch, C sharp for our 10 inch, A for our 12 inch, and another E but an octave lower for our 14 inch. So when we do a tom roll, it sounds like this. If you want a more detailed guide on the tuning ranges of each tom and the ideal tones to tune the toms to, you can check out my master drum tuning guide in the links below. Now there is a special interplay between the batter head and the resonant head. A classic studio tuning that will give us the right pitch bend downwards and the right length of resonance is a minor third between the batter head and the resonant head, meaning I tune the resonant head a minor third higher than the batter head. But when the heads resonate together, they will add up and give us a different pitch than when they resonate separately. In order to compensate for this, I've tuned the resonant head a minor second lower than my desired tone, and I've tuned my batter head a minor third lower than my resonant head. Let's start by tuning the resonant head. Start by getting all the lugs finger tight with an even amount of tension between each lug. This is a great starting point. Turn each lug a quarter turn using a crisscross pattern. Make sure to raise all of the lugs evenly. Once you start to hear a pitch resonate in your tom, this is a good place to check your tuning lugs and make sure that you have the same tone between each lug. The earlier you can start doing this, the more even it'll be and the less problems you'll have further on down the road. So I'm going to even it out now. you can audibly hear that these two lugs are higher than my other lugs. You'll also notice that each lug has a special relationship with the lug opposite to it. Generally, they share the tuning. Now my tom is decently even. Repeat the process and tune the resonant head all the way up using a reference tone to keep you in check. In the case of this tom, because I want to tune it to a C sharp, I'm gonna tune the resonant head to a C.
We're very low right now, about an F. So let's keep tuning it up. Remember to switch to eighth turns as you go higher, just because every little move is going to mean a lot more as you get closer to your desired pitch. That's about a C, so I'm gonna even it out now. If you get distracted by the overtones, you can use your thumb in the middle to cancel some of them out. These two are still high. Now it sounds like these two are high. So let's bring those down and the other four up a little bit. It's about a B now, so I'm gonna raise it again. Evenly. That's about where I want to be. Repeat this process, but now for the batter head. This time to an A. That's four semitones lower than our desired pitch. It's a little trickier to tune the batter head since it's a two ply, so it's a good idea to start with the resonant head. If you're using a two ply head, just look out for the overtones. Think fundamental. You can hear these two lugs are too low. G sharp, and now I'm gonna even it out. These two lugs are still low, which is good because I'm a semitone below where I wanna be. You could hear raising just those two lugs raised everything. That's about an A. Now let's check the tone of our tom. That's a C sharp. It's pretty much a C sharp. If you're using fresh, new heads, it might be a good idea to seat them. You can use the palm of your hands and press down in the middle of your drum head. Something like this. Then rotate and keep doing it. All the way around. You'll also notice that the tone will drop. That's no problem. That's just a natural process of seating the head. So just go back and tune it up using the lugs again. If the tuning is too far off after seating the head, just start over. Go all the way back to finger tight and tune your head up again from zero. A good idea is to seat the heads twice like this, tuning them up, breaking them in, tuning them up, breaking them in, and then tuning them up one more time to the pitch you want. Repeat the process for all of the other toms, then fine tune them when they're hanging in place. Let's have a listen to our 10 inch tom when it's hanging now. Sounding a little weird. I got some overtones and I have a little bit of warbling. So I'm gonna look around the tom and see if I can fix the problem. That's already sounding much better. If you have a problem on the tom like that, just play around with the other lugs until you find out where it is. If you can't figure out if your problem is on the batter head or the resonant head, just use your hand to mute the head that you're not playing. That way you can zoom in on where the problem is. If you're finding weird overtones on one of those heads, maybe have a closer look at the lugs. Now when the tom is hanging, you can get a little bit more experimental and just try tuning the lugs and see if you can find a better tone.
If you find you're still having problems, you can try a little bit of moon gel on the batter or resonant head, usually the resonant head. To me, moon gels are a last resort. If you have perfect heads and a perfect tom, you should be able to fix any problem just by tuning the tom properly. And I'm out. Uh, I like tuning my snare after the music I play, but since the music I play is mainly death and black metal, it kind of demands going a bit higher to cut through the mixes and all that stuff, so I like having it higher. But if I would play rock or something slower, I would probably tune it down a bit more to get it beefier and get a different dynamic range. So Yanni brought me this snare and it's already at a B. There's just a couple lugs that are a little low, so I'm just gonna tune it up a little bit. This is a Kevlar head. This, you can see it's a little bit worn, but uh, we're just doing this for educational purposes, so I'm just gonna tune it up. It's, he likes the feel of it, he likes to tune really high, so I'm gonna keep it around a B here. The key of the song is a B minor anyway, so it's probably gonna work fine. You can already hear a couple of them were out. So I wanna take down some, take some up. Get it pretty even, we're not gonna get too picky around the B anyway. And look at his bottom head here. Now the pitch of the snare relies primarily on the pitch of the batter head. The resonant head doesn't play that much of a role in the pitch, although it does a little bit. The main way I think about it is the resonant head is just a surface for your snare wires to vibrate on. So if you tune the resonant head higher, the snare wires will vibrate more because you'll have more tension and it's gonna vibrate more. If you tune it lower, the snare wires will vibrate less. That's the general idea. It's already pretty high, I'm probably just gonna keep it here, maybe just try to even it out a little bit. There's not so much you can do when it comes to the resonant heads in terms of these lugs here that are around the actual snare wires. So I just try to do my best. See, I use a stick to get my snare wires off the surface so I can hear what I'm doing. That's probably gonna be good enough. It's good enough for black metal, dude. Good enough for black metal. Yes. So I got my snare wires on. I'm happy with that. Just keep in mind, you can increase and decrease the tension of the snare wires. If the tension's too high, you're gonna choke the lower end of your snare off. If it's too low, it's gonna rustle too much and it's gonna have a lot of sympathetic resonance from other things that are on your kit. So try to find the sweet spot. Just think about the rustle shouldn't last longer than the actual resonance of your snare. Just make sure it's a nice punchy snare so you're not choking it off. Wow. Wow. Write that down, kid. Okay, let's tune the kick drum. I got a 20 inch Yamaha kick here made of birch. I prefer Remo Power Stroke 3 for the batter head and the resonant head, but there's a ton of different skins that work great. I also don't recommend using coated skins for metal. Clear just gives you a nice, defined, punchier sound. For the resonant head, this time we're using an Evans EQ3. Kick drums and metal tend to be tuned to their desired punchiness rather than fundamental note. That being said, we're gonna start off by tuning the kick visually. Before I get started, Let's make sure all the lugs are finger tight, just like you did with the toms, so that you have a nice, even starting point. Now what you're gonna wanna do is put your hand in the middle of the kick drum and depress the kick until you see wrinkles appear at each lug. You might wanna use an additional light just to see the wrinkles clearer. Now I'm gonna start tuning the kick until the wrinkles disappear at each lug. Then I'll tune the lug backwards just a little bit until the wrinkles reappear. Always remember to tighten the lugs evenly in respect to one another. Disappears. Reappears. Disappears. Reappears. Disappears, reappears. I'm gonna go around the kick like that. Then I can go around the kick one more time and just make sure the wrinkles disappear when I turn the lug the same amount for each lug. It gets a little tricky around the sound hole. Let's 
it's gonna make a nice punchy kick. Now you can follow this exact same process for the batter head as well. Once you've done both heads, get the kick standing and have your drummer play it. You can fine tune the kick by tuning up the resonant head or tuning it down. When you start tweaking the resonant head of the kick, you're gonna find that when you tune it up, you might get more punchiness, but you're gonna sacrifice a low end boom. If you turn it down, you're gonna get a boomier kick, but it might not be as punchy. Generally, if you're playing faster metal music, you're gonna wanna turn your kick up higher so that the notes are more defined. If you're playing slower music like doom and rock, you might wanna turn your kick lower just so that the boom of the kick fills out the space between the notes. Once you have the tone of the kick that you like, dampen it a little bit just by using some material that just touches the front head and just touches the back head. Something soft like a pillow, a blanket, a piece of insulation, all that stuff works. Just make sure not to muffle the front head or the back head too much or you'll kill your tone. Now because Yanni plays unconventional extreme metal, he goes at extremely high speeds with his kick drum and he needs a really fast response from his kick. Because of that, Yanni likes to tune his batter head quite high so he has a good response. You'll also find if you're using triggers, like Yanni using the RT30K, the tighter batter head is going to give you a better response. On top of that, Yanni is used to a stuffed kick, so we're going to stuff it right up with pillows and blankets so that he gets the right feel. I won't have as much tone from the kick. The microphones that I'm going to use inside of the kick resemble more of a sub mic rather than an actual kick mic. But that's fine. We're going to be using triggers anyway and we just want to get the low boom from the natural kick. Because of the speed, playability is the most important thing when it comes to the kick. Every note has to be heard. Stuff the kick because of triggering purposes mainly. It gives the kick a different kind of feel. Uh, it's not like a pad, it's not like a normal loose kick. Turning the kick to medium to high tension and stuff it like halfway just gives it a feel that I like. I always use kick triggers uh, when playing metal. Usually blend it uh, to get some dynamics from the normal mics. And uh, live I do the same thing. I hope that information was useful to you folks. Please let me know what kind of metal you like to play and record in the comment section below. Feel free to share your technique and subscribe to get more videos like this one. Bye bye!